Participation is to be um, part of a network in terms of connections and relations where your interactions actually create some sort of meaning either for you, for others or for both. Social networks are part of the very gregarious nature of the human uh, race in this planet. Ever since we had families, the notion of groups, maybe even before the notion of families, uh, or when we had housing, communal housing, and tribes, we were groups, and we were social networks. The online effect, the uh, online social networks, they actually change that by debasing your relationships from geography, immediate geography and time. Uh, that can add a lot of complexity to, to the process of interaction, of participation as such, but also can create new forms, new means, new ways of allowing people to participate in things, in meetings, in decisions, in processes, in networks that they would never have access to. That's, a, that's the difficult question you were sort of promising. <laughs> that's the hard one. We are still learning about that. You know, online social networks have had uh, so far sort of a decade and a half uh, of presence around the internet. It came about just with the internet itself. And although we could consider that email is a sort of a basic elementary social network. Uh, I think we are still trying to understand what participation is all about. We don't know that yet. We don't even know uh, from either technical or social or legal point of view what's the real effect of a like in a social network. When I say like to something or for someone or for some product, which is a kind of voting, I'm saying I like that, I would do something for it maybe, I'm suggesting that other people should like it. What's the meaning of that? What's the semantics of it? What's behind it? Um, is that going to lead people to take action on, on certain sorts of subjects or, on, or about certain sorts of products or services? We are still in the beginning of understanding um, what online social networks and participation on them and specifically uh, online participation in social networks that are policy or politics related can actually um, be. I'm not, I'm not sure if any, anyone has an answer. We're experimenting a lot but there is no, no um, firm answer on what that really is and what its effects on politics are going to be in the near term. In the long term, I think we're going to have quite a lot of changes because I think uh, we are living through the failure uh, right now of most of the processes associated to the notion of representative democracy. And of course, um, that's not the, the only way to, to, to have democracy. Um, it was the possible way because we had no other means to uh, get together in huge numbers to try and decide what we ought to do. But right now I think we are starting to learn new forms of associating people around ideas, around proposals for action, around uh, notions of uh, what the common um, public ground is and it's a new one and it's going to be a set of very interesting decades uh, for politics and online politics in the next maybe um, three, four decades. Yeah, I'm optimistic, I, I could say that. I'm a realist, in fact. I mean, uh, th there's no, no such um, thing of actually, you know, clapping fingers and say, okay, it, everything changed. Uh, politics is going to, to behave and politicians are going to behave in a different way from now on just because we have online social networks and they embrace billions of people all over the world. It's not like that that uh, things actually function. Uh, most people have to learn how to behave within a system and then to act in that system like first class citizens because it is of no use in, in fact, to just go online to simulate online things that we didn't have, uh, you know, in a good way, in an effective way offline. I think the main problem right now is that representative democracy, with all its layers of separation, um, 
from effective uh, government action to effective public demands and needs and actions, that separation can be bridged by allowing in the system levers and levels of social networks to actually um, close the gap. I don't know how that's going to happen in the short term, but I'm very optimistic in the long term. Oh, I think um, maybe we are looking at the best side of things at all times. I mean, you can choose when you are online, you can choose in a faster, cheaper way whether you want to be associated to something that is either good or bad. And sometimes you are in physical situations where you have no choice. I mean, I'm in a bus that's stuck in a log jam somewhere. What can I do about it? I mean, I don't have a choice. If I'm online and I don't like something, I just forget about it immediately and I switch to another tab, to another screen, to another conversation. Um, I think, um, you know, online is not uh, an ideal world. It's uh, the more online we get, the more online becomes part of the whole environment in which we live in and the more offline becomes online in several sorts of way. What we're going to have online is not much different uh, than we have offline anyway. So, um, and um, although a number of uh, aspects and characteristics of human beings and societies are going to change in the long run because not only of online, not only because of social networks, but because of robots, because of you know, web programming and many, many other uh, technological uh, developments that we're going to see over a period of maybe thousands of years, we are going to adapt ourselves uh, to that um, in the way we've been adapting for centuries, for millennia, for tens of thousands of years. I don't see how we are going to live in a permanently happy online social world or online world of any sort. It's going to be just the world. It's going to be good things, bad things, so and so.